Hi, Dr. Raj here, and today we're talking about diagnosing pulmonary sarcoidosis. So sarcoid in general is often misdiagnosed and underdiagnosed, but let's focus on the lungs today. So there are three things you need to do to diagnose it on the board exams and on the clinical wards. The first thing is getting an accurate history and physical examination, because the theme is just because you see non-necrotizing granulomas doesn't mean it's sarcoidosis. Because you get an occupational history that says, I'm exposed to beryllium, or a social history that states that I have parakeets as pets, maybe it's hypersensitivity pneumonitis, maybe it's beryllium exposure, and both those can have non-necrotizing granulomas in the lung. Also, is the patient symptomatic? If they don't have any symptoms, and I'm just going to monitor these patients, Well, maybe I don't need a biopsy at that time until I decide to treat them with immunosuppressive medications such as steroids. But what is the second thing you need to do? Look at the imaging. Is it classic for someone who has sarcoid? So when we talk about the lung, I'm going to look at that chest x-ray. I'm going to look at that high resolution CT scan of the chest. Does it have classic hyalur adenopathy? Does it have involvement of the bronchovascular bundle? And those will correlate with that diagnosis of pulmonary sarcoid. But of course, sarcoid can mimic many different things in the lung. The last thing, the third thing you're going to do is get tissue. And in the lungs, we do minimally invasive things first. Do a bronchoscopy. Get a bronchoalveolar lavage. And you can see if the predominant cells there are lymphocytes. Get flow cytometry on those lymphocytes to see if the CD4 cells, known as T helper cells predominate over the CD8 cells, which are cytotoxic T cells. Also, you want to get some tissue. Think about a transbronchial biopsy. Think about an endobronchial biopsy or something called an endobronchial ultrasound to get tissue from those lymph nodes in the mediastinum. And of course, you always want to rule out things like malignancy, things like infection. But if you do, do those three things, you will have a properly diagnosed pulmonary sarcoid for the boards.